so many artists offered their paintings for this competition. And among them stood one art piece. It was a calm and serene lake. And there were some snow-capped mountains reflecting upon this lake. And above the lake is a blue clear sky. And this picture seems perfect, a perfect image of peace. Many who came to weave these art pieces thought that this particular art piece would win the prize. However, much to their surprise, the king announced otherwise. He chose a different artwork. This particular piece of art had mountains too but they were not beautiful as the one it had before. Those mountains were rugged and bare. And above this lake was not a clear blue sky, but it was dark and gloomy weather. And people thought, how was it possible that King announced this to be the best representation of peace? And they had questions in their mind. But if one looked at coastly into this art piece, you can see a tiny bush growing from the crack of the rocks. A tiny bush. And in that bush, there's a bird sitting peacefully. And she has built a nest in that bush. Though her nest was surrounded by gloomy weather, mountains that were barren, Yet she was able to live in peace fully. Dear friends, true peace does not mean the absence of tribulations, difficulties and challenges in life. When we experience peace in our life, it does not mean that we don't have problems, difficulties in our life. We can truly experience the peace of mind and heart in our life, even amidst tribulations, challenges, and difficulties in life. The gospel brings to us a similar experience, not about a nest, but about a table. Now we have this scene here. Jesus is uttering his final verse to his disciples at the Last Supper. Now this table is surrounded by love and friendship. Jesus is telling these disciples, I am going to face my death, painful death. And around this table was not only love and friendship, but uncertainty, helplessness, hopelessness, fear. But amidst all of that, Jesus is able to have that calm spirit peaceful mind and heart. How was it possible for him to have that kind of disposition in his life? And he knew this last supper, and he knew this is his last meal with his friends. And he knew that Judas would betray him. Peter would deny three times, and his, all his friends would abandon him. Eventually, he's going to die on the cross, and having all of that in his mind, but he still lives in peace. He is at home with himself. Jesus is the peace himself. How was it possible for him to have that kind of serene and peacefulness in his heart? That is precisely because he completely surrenders. He throws himself to the hands of his father. He is completely attached to his father. His life is completely aligned to the will of God. So he is able to anchor in that peacefulness and calm mind and heart. Dear friends, having that kind of ambience around that table, uncertainty, hopelessness, helplessness, and Jesus has this beautiful verse on his lip. He says to the disciples, Peace I leave to you. Peace I give to you. The peace that I give you is not like the world that gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled, 
or be afraid. Jesus not only experienced and embraced God's peace in her lives, he is able to share that peace with his disciples. And how was it possible that he had that calm and peaceful mind? The world sometimes tells us the money, status, power can give us peace. But the experience tells us nothing would promise us peace. All the status, power, positions, money, it will give you some sort of peace, but it is not long lasting. It is transient. You are not able to enjoy the peace of Christ if you are too much attached to power, status, money. And if you feel like I have everything and I don't have to worry, so I can experience peace in my life. But we all will fall at times. That is not the true peace in our life. Stock market could crash, all our money is gone, and the peace is gone. Then where lies our peace, my dear friends? There are many ways that we can attain peace. Many spiritual writers have written on that. But one beautiful prayer has touched my heart always. This was written by Reinhold Niebuhr, American ethicist and political writer. He says this beautiful verse in his prayer as he begins. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can change and the courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. God grant me the peacefulness, serenity to accept the things I can change and to change the things I can in my life and to wisdom to know the difference. This is what we see in Jesus' life. Jesus knew the betrayal of Judas, denial of Peter, that the disciples would abandon him and he's going to face his death and he's going to have his final meal with his disciples. Yet, he lives in that calm, peacefulness and he has that beautiful heart that allows God to penetrate through his heart and experience peacefulness in his life. So dear friends, a great deal of anxiety, restlessness in our life comes from that our inability to recognize, differentiate what we can really change and what we cannot. What we need is that wisdom of Christ to embrace in our lives, to see what we really can change. The present and the past or the future sometimes are beyond our control. Some of the situations are beyond our control. If it is within your control, try to change it. If a situation bothers you, try to address it. Try to change the situation. And if it is beyond your control, then why do we need to worry ourselves? Because even if we worry, we spend so much energy worrying on things that are useless and we try to change and we are exhausted, we are stressed and we are not able to experience the peace of Christ in our life. Dear friends, bird that in that perfect picture of art, her nest was surrounded by gloomy, dark weather. The mountains were rugged and they were bare. But they were able to experience that peacefulness. True peace does not mean the absence of tribulations, difficulties, challenges. To experience peace is to anchor ourselves in God's providence. And if you are too much attached to power, status, money, will give us some sort of peace is not lasting. But Jesus asks each one of us is to find that inner peace in Christ. As Jesus tells us, he gives each one of us these words. May our hearts be enlivened. May our hearts be spirited by these words of Jesus. Peace I give to you, and this is my peace. And this is different from the world's peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or be afraid.